All right, Tabletop Life fans, Thomas Bird here again with another video battle report. Coming in hot with some new missions. We don't know the new points yet, but one last uh, game. Hopefully we'll have some points here soon uh, and new data slates. We may be changing all of this, but we do have the new missions and we do have all the secondaries so we can play those and see how that goes. But I'm still sticking with my old list for now until we get the new updates. Maybe the Marines will get some new stuff. Who knows? But let, until then, let's take a look at it real quick. Character-wise, we got four characters. We got the Apothecary Biologist with the Fire Discipline Relic. We got Uriel to give out the Deep Strikes. We got a Captain with the Honor of Eminent so he can act extra strength and extra attacks. We have the Phobos Lieutenant to give out Move after he shoots. It's a pretty sneaky guy. And then we have Calgar as the Warlord. Company Heroes. One man, three man, a Blade Guard. Six Eradicators, one big stack of them. To get the fire discipline, the full bounty. We got one six mana bolter inceptors, just doing all the bolter work. A land raider redeemer because they're still great. One lancer to carry up the heavy weapons anti tank roll. Got a unit of five infiltrators, a unit of five assault intercessors, a five incursors with the haywire mine, and one, two, three units of scouts. 2,000 points on the nose. Let's go take a look at our opponent's list and see what we're playing against today. All right, folks, my name is Steven, and I have brought some Imperial Knights for uh, Thomas to beat up on. Um, I'm going to have <clears throat> three Crusaders. One of them will have the Mysterious Guardian, and I will have Canis Rex, and we will have two Assassins coming with us, one Vindicare and one Calidus. All right, quickly jumping into the mission, we're going to be playing on Sweeping Engagement. Purge the Foe. Interesting that Steven chose that one when he only has like five models. Killing more will be difficult. And then Fog of War. This one's interesting. No uh, core strats on the first turn and you have cover. When I first played this last week, I was like, oh, no, no core strats, no reroll CP. And then it ended up being like, no cover pop smoke no grenades no sort all sorts of things so i was like oh crap those are all core threats so it'll be interesting we are playing on ntl layout three uh if rumors are be true I, I expect that we may see some new layouts coming uh with the data slate and the uh, rules so that'll be exciting but for now a gw standard layout table layout three for the ntl um, should be interesting with this deployment taking a quick look at the map you can kind of see like oh boy some objectives just out in the open Knights are going to have a field day, or are they? They might not be able to go, but there's plenty of space for the Knights to move around, so Steven's not going to be constrained by terrain. Um, but I don't know if he'll be able to hide from me. We'll see how it goes. Uh, onto the secondaries. Of course, he's got all the vehicles and the characters, so I'm just going assassinate and bring it down. Fix. I intend to kill him all the way. He's going to go tactical, see what the cards draw for him. With the new missions allowing Knights to shoot and still do actions, should be interesting to see. Uh, what he can get and how many points he's going to score. Let's uh, roll some dice and get started. And we'll come back after we deploy. Thank you. All right, here we are. It's rare that I have so few drops, and it's rare that I get to like be finished after my opponent and actually put important things down. But uh, the Knights just has so few guys. So looking at my deployment, kind of tentatively trying to hide. He does have the turn one potential deep strike, so I'm just trying to protect my flanks with some of these scouts. His last deployment, he put a knight here, and he says he wants to go first. So that knight could pose some problems. So luckily I had my land raider and my lancer left, so I was like, well, I'll be conservative and hide them. If that knight stays there, he's in potential danger. If he wants to come attack my scouts, he could run away. And then I'm far away from him, which could be bad for me. This is his jumping around knight. He has... Calidus on the table so he can bounce off the table on turn one after my turn. He has a Vindicare in reserve. For me, I have the Deep Striking Eradicators and I have the Deep Striking Inceptors. Everything else is on the table. I have some Scout loose so those Scouts could move. Let's see who goes first. Are we ready to roll for it? Roll the Dragon Dice that you can't see. A three to a five, so he got his wish. He's going first. Go first. Let's see if I'm wrong. 
All right, I'm going to do my scout moves, and then we'll come back after Steven's turn one movement, maybe, shooting. I don't know. We'll see and uh, see what he does. All right, so I had the option of sticking this knight's nose out and uh, trying to get an early turn one kill on a couple scouts, or far juicier would have been the infiltrators in the back. But I almost certainly lose that knight at the uh, at the bottom of turn one if I do that. So I'm going to be a little reserved. I'm going to keep him hidden. We're going to see what uh, turn two holds, and I'm going to forfeit those points. So he moved out. Canis stepped out. We left the Calidus sitting back here on an objective. This knight moved up. This knight moved up. He has the uh, the mysterious guardian. But maybe I'll be in a position to use it, hold it for later. I don't know. We're going to be try to be a little bit cagey, a little bit reserved, and see what happens. So the only thing that we will score on the first turn is just going to be uh, no man's land, and I'm going to hold prisoners for the uh, for the next round. Steven has given me the choices. He always makes it difficult. He's dangled this bait tantalizingly in front of me, and I'm going for it. So that's what I do. I just fall for the bait. Uh, but it could be a big turn, so we're going to try it. Uh, I've marked for Oath Can Canis. Calgar's here. He's going to advance. Hopefully he gets a good advance. Try to charge him. It is turn one, so I can't re-roll that advance. It just has to be what it is. Can't re-roll the charge either, so hmm, fog of war. The Lancer can move out and get an angle to shoot at Canis, so he'll help there. Inside here, we get the Landrier can drive out. Get some shots on this knight and charge him with the captain and friends. So between all of that, I feel like that knight will die. Depends on where he pops it. Most likely he'll, he'll spin to rotate on Canis. So we'll see if we can make him make a tough choice. And yeah, we can't even do grenades on the first turn. Ugh, this fog of war. <laughs> I want to throw some grenades. Um, normally I would advance Calgar, throw a grenade. Can't throw grenades in the... If you advance, can't do an, a strat. If you, oh no, I can't do actions. Oh, I still could do it. Oh, I'm still. Good. Oh, but I can't do grenades because it's fog of war. Ah, stupid. All right, let me come back after my movement. Hopefully, I roll good. All right. Well, well I, I immediately put down the camera. Roll the first roll for Calgar, the one that was probably, arguably, the most important in terms of advanced rolls. I rolled a one, of course. So I had to make the decision: Do I want to come out? We measured it. I need a nine-inch charge. Clearly, not the best choice. Even in my Thomas Bird betting fashion, that's not a choice I should make. But we're doing it because we're having fun. And, you know, if I make it, oh, great. I uh, can't re-roll it, though, so it's just going to be the hard nine all the way. So we brought all the stuff. The choice was if I don't do it, then I don't attack him. And I just go all in on one night, which is not the worst choice. Save Calgar for turn two. Plenty of time. Don't be a rush. But, man, who has time for that? Here we got the Lancer coming out. Got a tool on the objective just in case the Lancer dies. These scouts have stuck their nose out so they could try to shoot at Canis because he's oathed. Of course, if I went for the one night and I didn't have the oath on it, it would be just glorious when I missed with all my shots. I was like, I cannot let the oath go to waste. These guys are advancing just to kind of put a little hole here for screening. I think there's definitely a place for the Calidus if she wants to come in and be annoying. Can't stop that, but I can stop his mysterious guardian knight from getting a free shot down there. Um, these guys are blocking screening this whole bubble here. So let's go back and do some shooting. We'll come back and see when it's time to assault what is left and how many wounds we got to get. All right. Here we are at the end of the shooting phase. Canis is down to nine. He failed both in vulnerable saves despite rotating from the Lancer. I did 15 damage out of my 2d6 plus six. I rolled a three, I re-rolled it into a six, and I rolled another three. So big damage on the guy. He hit a couple sixes, but he's taken some wounds. Everyone else popped off. Calgar popped off. Really no other damage. I moved these scouts up thinking I'm going to throw grenades. Right after I just talked about on camera how I couldn't throw grenades, I'm like, am I just like old? I forgot already within two seconds. The Land Raider and friend shot. The Flamer could not roll any sixes to wound despite rolling a lot of shots. Um, but the multi melt hit for six, eight wounds because I was up close. So he's down to 13. Um, we do have the mine. We're going to try to do some sneaky things. We're going to do some stuff. We have to make some charges. Ideally, these guys rolled a six for their move after they shot. So they're going to try to charge this knight here. If they get a good charge, they're going to put it close 
to Canis so that in the fight phase we can throw the mine onto Canis. Just in case you know, hometown Tina here misses the nine. If he hits the nine, I feel like everything's okay. Let's go ahead and roll it on camera. We can't re-roll it. There's no more drama than this. Oh, right here on the first turn. We got, we got a big thumbs down. Here we go. Ha! Oh, a five. Calgar. I have a chance. Gets to stand around like a noob. I have a chance. All right, let's roll the rest here. So, yeah, I'll just come back after this mess of uh, moving models, and then we'll see where it lines up. All right, not a good <laughs> set of rolls. Um, this guy's just out of three to throw the grenade onto Canis, uh, the mine. So while I could pile in and fight him, there would be no mining him. So that's not ideal. Um, we could try to fight with Uriel and then they throw the mine and that could kill him. But then the captain is too far to fight over there because he rolled really low. So there's really no way to kill Canis this turn. I went ahead and charged scouts in. Potentially Uriel can go in there and fight him. Try to pick off the last few wounds. Not ideal, but we're going to try to do all the damage we can. We've already committed, so we're just out in the world. We're just going to do it. So let's roll some dice. We'll come back, see if we kill the one knight easy. And then we'll try to take out as many wounds as we can out of Canis. All right, what about as expected? Uh, I had the captain's free strat. I went ahead and popped it on the scouts because he could not interrupt. And uh, they they did one wound to the knight, plus one to wound. The captain popped his once per game power, ate the knight up by himself. Despite not being on an objective, used the strat for free to get plus one to wound extra AP. Rolled a bunch of fours, did him in, some devastating. Uriel and company ran up and actually rolled some sixes to wound. So I put four saves on him. He hit two of them. So he took some wounds, he's down to four wounds. And then the incursors piled in, but only one guy could get into combat. Had lethals, fished for sixes, didn't get any. So he's on three. Now I've given him lots of models to fight. Uriel squad's re-rolling ones for their vulnerable saves. So he's gonna have lots of choices on who he wants to swing. He's got his Calidus over there, so he's saving my Armor of Contempt here, trying to make it cost extra. So I thought he might do it when I did plus one to wound. I was trying to draw that out, but he didn't. So we're going to have to see if I really want to armor contempt here. It depends who he fights. All right. He, was, he, was, he made some interesting choices. Um, he got the full breakdown. Uriel is with the blade guard, so he's rerolling one to save. It's three damage from his ten attacks. He's got exploding, but he is degraded, so he's trying to decide. Do I go for scouts to try to get an easy kill? Because he wants to kill more, or kill at least kill for the thing. Does he try to split attacks and maybe try to go for two squads and get killed more? Does he just go for Uriel's squad because there's only three guys, and if I fail three saves, he gets a kill. So it's kind of back and forth. I do have fours rerolling ones for them, so they're probably the hardest target but the best value. So he's trying to decide. He went through it all. He forced me to take nine saves on them. I rolled this for the saves. I failed only two, so he killed two blade guard not enough to get any kills all the worst of, that could possibly have happened so uh, um that is the end of turn one looks rough we'll have to see he's got some options now it's, i've got everything exposed for the most part but i do still have reserves that are going to do a number on his knights when he comes in so we'll see what happens who he kills and then we'll kind of stage for next turn we'll be back all right, we're in a bit of a pickle. That uh, that first turn did not go well for us. Uh, this knight here died, and uh, I didn't get anything for it. And so that was a uh, that was a pretty ugly misplay. But uh, that's all right. We're learning. the uh, The guy who was up here on this objective, he bounced out and came back in over here on the corner. So uh, hopefully, we're gonna make some uh, we're gonna get some work out of him. Canis is gonna stay. He's almost dead. Uh, fingers crossed. We uh, we spent the CP to uh, buff all his stats and we'll uh, for free, and we'll see where we go from there. The uh, the Caldas Assassin bounced out. She's over here uh, again. It's not a great uh, great use of any of these tools, but uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, the dice will save us, and we'll come back for next turn. Oh oh yeah, that's right here. Hold on a second. And I kept prisoners, and I drew overwhelming force. So. You know, hopefully we score a bunch of points this turn by killing something. 
<laughs> a lot of laughing on my side, not so much on Stevens. A lot of groaning. I think as as bad as it could possibly go. Over here, he was like, "Let me shoot the Gatling cannon." Like, well, I got cover. I'm going to armor contempt it onto Calgar. He's like, "All right, well, I'm going to use my Calidus to say yeah. Vect," and I'm like, "I don't care. I want to live." So he shoots his Gatling gun. I've got cover. Got armor contempt AP two. I could take it on two up saves on a Vitrus guard, but I elect to just take it on a three up save onto one of the guys. So he tanks a bunch of hits. I lose one. He shoots the Melta. He's like, 2d3 shots with blasts. He rolls snake eyes. And I'm like, you can CP that for uh, re-roll the number of shots. So he does that. He rolls three shots instead of two. So after he shoots all the Melta guns, he does one wound. I mean, just bad rolling on top of bad rolling. I'm minus one to wound. He needs threes to wound me. Rolls a bunch of twos. He makes me take one save. I'm like, I take a cover save on the guy. Five up, I make it. I'm like, oh my gosh. So Kenneth's like, don't worry. I got four damaged guns. I'll shoot him. And uh, he ends up killing a few guys. But I end up taking some on Vitrix eventually. And then um, I'm still alive. So you can see where the damage is done. Calgar's still alive. This guy says, okay, well, I'm going to do something. We got to get a kill. We're going to split fire here. Melt the guns on the Land Raider and the missiles and the Gatling cannon on these five guys. Well, I'm like, well, the captain still has his free strat. I'll armor a contempt again. It cost me extra because of the cowardice, but I'll spend that. And then I survive the Gatling gun, the missile launch, and the flamer. <laughs> the the Melted guns like rolled a lot of shots. And he's like, I need fours to wound you. And he only rolled one, one wound. It was, it was awful, even with his reroll. So. Everything's still alive. He didn't kill anything. We're about to go into combat. I get the swing first. If Uriel somehow pulls the magic out of his hat, <laughs> I could potentially kill him. I think he's probably got the best shot at it. He's still Oath, so get rerolls. We'll come back and see if Canis can fight um, or if he gets blown up in the fight phase. We got some mid-game action here. Uriel and one Blade Guard. It's hard to focus here. Um... They got the three sixes. He's got four wounds. These are two damage each. He does have a reroll. He shouldn't die. He popped the extra thing to make Canis buff. So he's going to actually be taking four up saves here with his two up save. Let's see him. Roll yeah. him on camera. Four. Oh, That's one. he's good so far. He just four. needs to make one more. Oh, he's oh, fine. Oh, the drama. I want, I want them all. Steven was so sad. He feels one oh. of them. The boxcars, no damage taken. All that stress for naught. All right, we'll come back. <laughs> All right, the swings have come through. He decided to split six attacks and four attacks. The blade yard took the four. Um, I took four wounds. He did not explode any attacks. Um, but even though he was degraded, since he picked that strat up, he was actually back to hitting on two, so it was good for him. Four saves, I failed two of them. He killed the blade guard and did wounds to Uriel, but he survives. On the other side, he did eight wounds to the scouts. They needed six ups, they failed, they died. So he was able to get some overwhelming force for the scouts and no prisoners. Um, and killing the blade guard and the scouts gives him two units for no prisoners. So I gave him four points there. But everyone else lived over here. The impetuous Vindicare assassin. Shot his pistol, rolled a bunch of ones, ran in and slapped me, rolled a bunch of ones. It was terrible. <laughs> and the scouts are like, uh, we slapped you back, and now he's on one wound. So probably not where he wanted to be, but like I think he was desperate at that moment when all the knights went down. It's now my turn two. This game is going pretty fast. It might be the short battle report here. Let me bring my units in, and then we'll count up the score for his turn, and then we'll see what I can kill this next turn. All right, bottom of turn two. We have did all the moving. We're in the Devastator Doctrine. Uh, so we could advance and shoot. So we advanced this tank up. We could not get line of sight on this knight. So we are just aiming to get a little closer so all our guns work on Canis. He's not oathed. So we went ahead and put these guys into Tactical Doctrine so they could fall back, shoot, and charge. That will let me... Back out of combat, so I'm not hitting at minus one. It'll also let me shoot and give me a plus one, and then I'll be able to move and charge. So we're bringing those guys down. Calgar advanced and charge because he still has one lone company hero guy left alive. So he's going to come over here. We're oathing this guy. 
We have bolter and scepters here to potentially help. We position those incursors to give me a plus one to hit, probably down here. And then we've dropped the full Monty eradicators on this side next to the land raider. Hopefully with our powers combined and the captain potentially to help out, we've got more than enough to deal with that guy. So we're going to see what the land raider does. We may split fire. We have an option for grenades. We have a lot of ways to kill this guy. He might just die to the Lancer and it'll be free. And then we can devote all our firepower to the Oath Knight. But I feel like this side's here. We got the land raider to help also pick up the Calidus. The scouts are moving in to help. And these scouts are like, we got a Vindicator in our grasp. We're going to shoot pistols. It's going to be great. Maybe we're going to kill him in this turn with a shooting phase. And Uriel's like, if this knight doesn't die, hopefully he won't explode on me. We do have the option, once this guy dies, to fall back and charge or get shot. Because we know Hector Rex is falling out. we got to get Hector, the little guy. All right, a rambunctious shooting turn. The Lancer shot. He could not afford to uh, use Rotate on a four-wound Canis. Uh, but he did use his free reroll. But uh, he failed both saves when the Lancer's big gun hit. So I did 15 damage to him. He died pretty violently. But he did not explode, so that's good. These guys shot and gave plus one to hit on this knight here. And then shot a bunch of wounds at the other guy. So I clipped a couple wounds. The Eradicator shot next. They hit with eight wounds. He failed four of them. So not really outside the realm. Maybe I did nine wounds to him. Failed four. Um... Um, I rolled a total of 17 damage, I think, and then he hit a couple sixes, so he was still alive. The scouts shot at the Calidus. Heavy bolters both hit. A couple shotguns failed most of the saves. She just died kind of to the scouts. It was terrible. The land raider's like, I guess I'll just shoot the land raider. He rolled all the shots. One multi melt to went through. I was just outside of nine, but I did roll the six to wound. That was enough to finish off the land raider. So I was like, I had guys ready to throw grenades. The captain was ready to punch it. These guys were ready to roll in and punch it. They didn't need to. So now we went over here to these guys, the bolter and scepters, hitting on twos, fishing. They rolled all 18 shots, no sixes. Picked them up, fished, got four sixes, and then re rolled all the wounds looking for sixes, twin linked. When the dust settled, I made them take. 12 saves so pretty violent um i popped 16. it was 16 saves. 16. oh it's right here right yeah oh it's 12 right oh it's 12 they're two damage i saved I, I saved really well yeah right i saved four of them yeah i popped the strat to make it ap2 so he rolled pretty good on his five ups and then he hit a couple six ups but he ended up taking 12 damage after all said and done so pretty good calgar's coming in hot now uh, ready to punch out the last 10 wounds. Um, over here, the scouts were like, we shot pistols at the one wound assassin. I was able to force him to go down. So it's really up to Calgar. Can he get the last kill? And we'll wrap up this game already in the bottom of turn two. Oh my gosh, table one, turn two. Um, we need this charge here. We do have one CP if we need it. We don't want to waste it right now. We rolled a nine. All right. So we'll just roll the dice now. See if Calgar can do it on camera here. A nine will get me all in. We're going to spend our one CP for plus one to wound. We have the oath, so we're going to do the full power. Let's just do Calgar first. Uh, Calgar is battle shot. Oh, that's right. We can't spend strats. Oh, no. We have to do it the old-fashioned way. Rolling dice. He did fail his battle shot with a snake eyes. No strats. So hitting on twos with oath. Good thing. All hits. Strength eight. He needs fives, but he's twin linked. No, not one. Mm, it's cocked here. So three saves. These are AP three, so six ups. Mm. These are three damage each. No one. He's got one wound left. We got the Vitress Guard. They got 10 attacks. Can they do it? Strength 5. They need 6 of the wound. No way to help. 2's with Oath. They all hit. Needing the 6's. I see 1 6. 2 6's. He's got to make 2 saves. AP 2. 5 ups. Oh, 4 damage. He's got to hit 4 6's. 
Four six ups. Calgar. Oh. Does he explode? He doesn't even have the courtesy to blow up. Well, that, that was the most violent turn I've ever seen. The uh, the Knights have been defeated. Oh, my goodness. Look at all those good guys. So, wow. <laughs> Let me <It's> great. <laughs> Steve. Okay. Well, thanks thanks for watching. Any, any last comments to say, Stephen, before we wrap this video up? We'll be back for round two in a little while. <laughs> We're going to have a rematch. We're going to restock, re rack play another game. Uh, maybe not on camera so we can like take the pressure off of Stephen. Um, but uh, thanks for watching if you stayed this long. Um, hit that like, share, subscribe if you like this kind of content, these types of video reports. It helps us tremendously. So I'm glad to be back. Love to film the games. Sorry, Stephen, in advance. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.